Hi there. Um, I just wanted to do a quick follow on video uh, to the part one and part two for the auto number. I've had a couple of people question about how to do a simulated load test and to do with the fact that I stated that in a high volume situation that the auto number would not, the, the plugin wouldn't fail to function, but the, the way it has to retrieve the current position of the counter and then do some logic and update back. If there's a lot of records simultaneously being written, it can very easily have duplicate auto numbers. So I just wanted to show you a quick method of how to do a sort of multi-threaded load test. Um, so we've got, this is our CRM from uh, the last lessons, created an auto number entity and plugin. So we can see it registered against the account entity to target the account number with this prefix and suffix. And obviously we wrote the plugin uh, to concatenate these together. I mean, I'll set this counter just to an arbitrary start point. So if I say 500, just save that. So all the subsequent accounts I create are going to start from 500 padded to, so it'll be 00, 500 and 501 and so on. So we need to create some test data. Um, there's lots of test data generation sites. I've used Mockaroo in the past, um, which obviously can do up to 1,000 rows for free, and then there's various pricing levels if you want to produce like hundreds of thousands or millions of rows. But for the purpose of this demo, 1,000 is going to be more than sufficient. So I've set up a very simple map. I've got an ID column that I don't actually need because um, – our key field for an account is company name. Um, I'm not sure whether this guarantees uniqueness, though. I don't think it does. So we could have duplicate names, but obviously the software I'm going to use to do the load test will import. Um, well, we can either it'll either ignore duplicates if we make that the key field because it would treat it as the same key and therefore skip the row, or we could utilize the ID and pass that into another I don't know, description or or not map it. Um, and then and we'd have to allow duplicates, but for the purposes of the demo, even if we've got duplicates, we've got a few hundred records, it'll be sufficient. And I've just put an address one city in. There's no requirement. Um, I haven't got a business requirement on that field. So I can then generate CSV. I'm doing a thousand rows. CSV, include the header, download the data. So we've now got this mock data CSV file which I can open in my Excel. Let me just uh, shrink this down. And then it's got all these randomly generated names that I think probably do, to be honest, repeat throughout the data. Um, can't spot any off the top. I think that Uber, yeah, I've seen Uber there. So there are duplicates, so it's not ideal. Um, but it, it gives us even a few hundred rows of unique data. That should be sufficient for the load test. So if I close that... Close that, sorry. Um, minimize Mockaroo. I'll just copy my file across to my virtual server's desktop or virtual PC. So I've got my mock data, which I can open with Notepad. So there we can see our CSV file. It's got our ID column name and address one city. I'm using an application called DataSync Studio from Simigo. Um, I've just got a trial at the moment. Uh, so I've just installed this. I've got an 11-day trial version. Um, you can do this how it, if, you, if you prefer to use integration services or write your own little console app and run multiple instances. The thing I like about this is, obviously, we can do similar with integration services, is that um, you can run multiple threads. So I can connect on the left-hand side to my data source so that'll be my flat file csv it's on my desktop point it to that file okay it'll identify the schema of the file so it sees there's an id a name and address one city and i can preview that data it's showing what we just saw in notepad so I close the preview and then the right hand side i can connect to my crm system so it's got it connects to the actual web service. So 
I can choose CRM 2011 to 2015. Mine's on a managed domain, but obviously if you were Office 365, it's federated and so on. Um, that's the URL of my server. I need to put my credentials in. That's my credentials. Then I can search for the organizations on my from the discovery service. So I want my CRM demo, my account picked from the list of entities. I can pick my account, um, and then I can OK this, and it will prompt me to save the connection in the registry. Um, I have got it previously saved as well, but either way, I can just either save another one, but that's the same connection that it previously saved. So I can pick that and choose the entity, which is account. That will connect to my account entity and attempt to automatically match the fields. So it's attempted to match ID to default price level ID, um, which we don't actually need the ID for. So I'm going to delete that row by highlighting it on the left. So then all we're going to map is the account name to name in the CRM system and address one city to address one city. All I'll need to do is specify that name is the key column so that when it's comparing what's in the source file to the destination, it would do so on the name. Um, then if I do a compare A to B from that data file of a thousand rows, there's only 356 that are unique. So obviously all those Ubers that we saw and so on, they've obviously replicated um, probably three times each looking at them. And we've actually got the unique, but 356 will be sufficient for the purposes of this demo. So on the right hand side, in the properties of the connection of the destination, we can see this thread count option. So I can put that up to say, this is a quad core virtual server. So I can put four threads, could go higher and it'd probably put multiple threads on one processor, but it probably wouldn't benefit from the, the performance. Um, I'll probably just do it in batches of 25 records. So it'll do four threads simultaneously with 25 records per batch or simultaneously trying to be added into CRM. So if we I'll bring up the CRM again, so I go to the account entity. You can see I've currently got a few test records from um, the, the previous videos where they were obviously counting up. Um, that was when we were doing testing to resolve why the plugin wasn't working, which is why those are duplicated. But you can see that when it was working and there was a low low volume of records, they were sequential. Um, so now if I hit the synchronize button. Uh, there shouldn't be any errors, so it doesn't matter about that tick box. But and I hit start, what it would do is fire up four threads and attempt four simultaneous connections to our destination system, each one with 25 records that it will in turn try and create each of its 25 records on four different threads. So we should get a reasonable throughput, even though this is on virtual servers, sufficient to demonstrate that how the auto number would fall down in this in this situation. So if I start that, you should see, obviously it, it'll build up in the, the number of records completed and you should get a, a, an indicator of how many records per second it's processing at. So you can see it's already processed 200. It may even finish before it does the, yeah, so it was processing at 22 records per second were being inserted into CRM. So if I bring up my CRM now and refresh my account list, so we can see all these records have been created and the auto number is fired. If I now order by account number, we can see we've got what? One, two, three, four with the number 500, three with 501, three with 502, three with... So basically because of the multi-threaded nature, it was inserting them. Each instance of the plugin was retrieving the current counter position seeing that it was at 500, for example, or 501, inserting that, adding one on, updating it, but these were, had also retrieved the same and so on. So you, in, you can see how in a high volume situation, that type of auto number just doesn't work. Um, and obviously you'll find most solutions on the market do the same. I think power objects are unique in that they go out to an external web service to get the next position. Um, the only thing that's possibly been introduced with CRM 2015 update one 
is you can now only do updates. You can specify as part of the update request what to only update if the row version is the same as when you retrieved it. So although you would get back a, an exception, it's possible that you could allow it a period of, um, I don't know, a, a slight pause, a thread going to sleep before it retries. It doesn't then guarantee that you still won't get a concurrency issue and that the row will have been updated by another thread. But at least you're not going to end up creating duplicates. So you might have to handle it in some other way. But I'll possibly do another video on the new features of Update 1, which is obviously unique to CRM Online at the moment. But um, that sort of completes this short video, just to give you an idea of how to do some sort of load testing. Um, so thank you for watching. Bye.